UAE to boost humanitarian efforts, according to the ruler's representative. UAE Minister of Environment and Water warns on the effects of fluctuating food prices. And Bangkok businesses stay open despite the ongoing floods. This is 7 National News in our top story this evening. His Highness Sheikh Hamdan bin Zayed Al Nahyan, the ruler's representative in the Western region and chairman of the Red Crescent Authority, has expressed his interest for the UAE to boost its humanitarian efforts to assist victims of poverty and famine on a global scale. The ruler's representative stated that these efforts will help revamp human development in marginalized zones and warned of the repercussions of poverty-stricken nations due to drought and disease, especially in Somalia. Malia. He urged the community to help take responsibility to help suffering through the provision of better living conditions of victims. Sheikh Hamdan also said that up to 750,000 people may die in the Horn of Africa in the next few months and called on the UAE to help the Red Crescent Authority with its efforts to supply food, water and medicine. Meanwhile, the UAE project to assist Pakistan has set up water plants and water supply network extensions to villages and residential areas in Pakistan for clean drinking water. 26 projects have been set up in total. UAE Minister of Environment and Water has said that the fluctuation and soaring of food prices, especially on basic food staples, has contributed significantly to food insecurity across the globe and hampered the international efforts to curb famine victims, which has increased to over 1 billion people worldwide. In a statement to mark World Food Day 2011, which is Sunday, October the 16th, Dr. Rashid Ahmad bin Fahad said that the continuing food price fluctuation would hamper the concerted international efforts efforts to reduce victims of poverty in poor countries. The minister cited World Bank reports, which stated that the rise in food prices during 2010 to 2011 pushed 70 million people to the acute poverty line. The minister noted that the UAE depends on importing to meet its food needs, indicating that the country is also at risk of price fluctuation effects, though less than other countries. The Dubai Health Authority is among the government sectors that recently introduced a host of online services. According to DHA officials, the new system is a significant leap for the health sector and is the first in the Middle East. In addition to implementing a paperless system, authorities say this will also help facilitate services faster. This will provide the community an improved platform to communicate with them, allowing faster, more efficient transactions and services. This includes everyone, especially those interested in obtaining a license to practice in Dubai, as well as investors looking for opportunities to set up businesses in the healthcare sector. The DHA is also now on Facebook and Twitter that aims to highlight a variety of campaigns, including blood donation as well as provide other pertinent information to the public. Officials also said they will soon introduce iPhone and iPad applications. Now everybody's busy. They don't have time to come to the office and discuss those things. So we are creating an atmosphere that everybody around the world to link them through this website. And uh, fortunately this time we had one of the best websites which is in the Middle East this time. It's uh, one of the complete electronic program which can link the whole societies. Plus the government had a, a vision which was by His uh, Excellency His Highness Sheikh Mohammed that we should have all investment uh, easy for them. Now the investors, they can easily go to the website to know what are the requirements for the clinics, doctors and so on. They can easily participate and uh, instead of visiting us physically, they don't know what they have to apply. So nowadays they have an idea. Before they come to us, they come ready. So we finish them earlier. Breast cancer affects many lives, but the global campaign continues in a bid to raise more awareness, early detection and proper diagnosis. The UAE is also doing its share to help save as well as protect women and families from the disease. A variety of campaigns are running across the country during this month. Among them is an art exhibition that hopes to convey messages of hope, love and support. These works of art have been on display for a week at the Festival Center in Dubai Festival City, attracting both enthusiasts as well as curious residents. More than the aesthetic value of each piece is an underlying message that aims to get people moving and taking a positive response to help combat breast cancer. 
These are some of the 50 UAE-based professional and freelance artists who joined hands to raise awareness and send messages of encouragement, love, and hope to everyone. When this chance came, I felt like I really, there's this feeling inside because I'm, I'm positive that there is not a single family or woman who were touched by the breast cancer, either a relative or a friend, their mothers, you know. So we all, like, we are so much compassionate as a, like, this womanhood thing about this issue because we know how hard it is. So I felt like I really wanted to do something, you know. I don't know, and this is maybe the simplest way. This painting actually is depicting, it's just a juxtaposition of colors, right? But it has the barbed wire, which is probably the hardship, uh, the pain that the woman has to go through. But then you also see other angles to the painting, which means after the pain, it should be okay. Art is like a form of, um, it heals, I, I believe, because whenever you get depressed, you, you put in colors and you just concentrate on those works. It gives you a relief. Indeed, every person has a story to tell. Among them is a special needs child who painted this powerful piece after losing his dad to cancer. The different stories of loss, pain, and lessons learned are depicted on each frame in a kaleidoscope of colors and a variety of styles. My mother-in-law went through the same thing and uh, that's how she, she passed away. She, she fought as much as she could. So that's why it's just a tribute towards her. A relative of mine suffered from cancer and when she was detected, her first fleeting thought was, what if I lose the memory of my loved ones? And the only thing that actually drove her through this difficult phase of her life was, you know, the blessings of God and her loved ones. And that's the reason that I have put the spiritual piece up because uh, the kind of work that I've put up, it says that uh, it will take all your pain and difficulties away and it will give your family all the happiness that you desire. The different faces of a woman are widely depicted, young, old, and faceless. It's also rich with symbolisms that make one strong, all the trials a female goes through and the joys that a woman brings to her family and loved ones. By highlighting these, they hope to encourage everyone to know more about the disease, seek proper and timely diagnosis, as well as treatment. Unfortunately, I know somebody who passed away because of cancer, not necessarily breast cancer, but they detected it very late. So again, get regular checks, you know, don't be lazy about it, do it, and you never know. So just keep your fingers crossed and stay positive. Awareness is the main thing because if you, I, I've met a lot of people today who are like, what is this about? And the, the moment I mentioned breast cancer, they're like, they don't even want to know what, what it's all about. It's like as if, you know, there is an infection, infectious disease moving around. They, they don't want to know. So it's very important for exhibitions like this to, you know, spread that awareness. Though the Women of Heart art exhibit has concluded, artists hope that through their gifts, vibrant colors, and interesting designs, they have painted the reality of breast cancer and what should be done to save lives. Khadija Sali, 7 National News. 12,000 school seats have become available for the 2011-2012 academic year, according to representatives from the Abu Dhabi Education Council. According to a local paper, officials say that they are expecting 10 to 12 schools to open next September to add to the current 55. They stated that a number of Asian schools should also open in April. In addition to this, a number of extensions have been carried out on existing units, which are to receive full inspections over the next six months. This will include health and safety as well as student performance. Should they pass ADEC's requirements, they will receive a one-year operational license or will otherwise remain on their provisional license until they pass. The Middle East is set to witness a 145% jump in tourism by 2030, according to figures released by the United Nations World Tourism Organization. The statistics show that the region will see a rise from 61 million in 2010 to 149 million in 2030, capturing a global market share of 8%, up from 6%. The report also revealed that the worldwide tourist arrivals have been forecast to grow by 3.3% per year, passing the 1 billion mark by 2012. Experts also state that by 2015, emerging economies will see more international tourist arrivals than advanced economies with a share of 58%. 
Looking to other news now, rescue workers scrambled to reinforce makeshift walls and sandbags around Bangkok today as the worst floods in half a century threatened Thailand's low-lying capital after swamping entire villages in the north. Bangkok residents are struggling to keep the normalcy in their daily lives as floods flowed into the city. Business has slowed down as city residents were more focused on bunkering down for possible emergencies. Prime Minister Ying Lang Shinawatra has sought to reassure Bangkok's 12 million people, they should largely escape floods that have covered a third of the country since July, killing at least 289 people and causing about $3 billion in damage. Ying Luck said that the government was focused on releasing flood water to the sea. Bangkok is the country's commercial heart, accounting for 41 percent of the economy. And dramas continue from the stricken New Zealand ship. A salvage crew is prepared today to pump fuel from the container ship Rena, which is still grounded on the Astrolabe Reef. Crews are racing against time to pump as much fuel as possible from the ship. Bad weather is forecast for early next week, raising the likelihood that the ship would break up and release more fuel into the ocean. Television New Zealand reported that crews managed to attach new pumps to Rena's hull. Officials are now concerned about the, pos the position of the stern of the ship and fear that it is much less stable than previously thought. Containers were leaning at a precarious angle on the ship, making the salvage job more dangerous. About 88 containers are known to have fallen off so far. Up next, we have the day's business news for you, so stay with us.